Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and it's Monday, so you know what that means. Mini Monday Madness! We're doing some spring vignettes um, using ink and wash. And uh, I think you really guys, I think you guys will enjoy this. I show you how to draw this, but if you're a Patreon member, you can download the Traceable. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a place people can go and support my channels, and they can get my um, to Traceables, ad-free videos, and exclusive tutorials on Thursdays. Check it out right here. Um, yes. If you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so that um, you know my tutorials are up. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And let's get painting. Alrighty, so I'll go over my supplies. I have two pieces of three inch squares, um, Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper, my palette. I'll be working with a Princeton 8 long round, a Princeton 4 in long round, a Sharpie pen, and probably like a nice uh, ink fountain pen, you know, just simple to make a little thicker lines if I wanted to do that, play around with it. My water jars, paper towels. Um, if you're, like I said, if you're on the Patreon, you can download the traceable. If you're not on Patreon, just basically kind of show you how I quickly withdraw a wheelbarrow and you just kind of like put some nice watercolor flowers in there. So you're basically gonna start with a slanted line here right curve it a little bit go across have that one come here and then kind of curve up like that then you've got the base of the wheelbarrow right then you have the wheel and have a little line here right get the wheel and then we have this little um attachment so it's a line slanted and like a little v and then we have the wheelbarrow arm coming here and then up and the handles and then went over here so it's a curved line and then from here you make this line down and go back up that makes the the base that's holding everything and then from here you're just kind of putting in some flowers there's so many flower tutorials i have on my youtube you can just kind of draw in some pretty flowers even if you don't draw them in you can just kind of wash color in it's just nothing specific if you want to make a real specific detailed flower you can throw in some tulips little sprays that's pretty much it and then for the flower pots you know it's just these rectangular lines here rectangular shape and it slants it down and then you've got your pot and then the same thing we're just going to make these greens come out here and just really loose purple for the lavender for the um the trial here we go like this it's just a rounded triangle a line it's kind of thick, round. So you're making two, kind of like a rounded rectangle, and then you're curving it like that. So you make the same kind of pot, but just smaller here. And then we're just gonna put some, whatever flowers you want in here, tulips. See, I'm just doing these little quick leaves and quick tulips. Good daffodils, you can put whatever you want in there. So that's that. Um, so I have already got my sketch in here. And so like I said, you can use multiple tool, multiple ways of doing this. It could just paint it all watercolor. I'm going to try and do something different, like mixed media a little bit, like, like the ink wash kind of look. And basically you're going to draw in all your little blooms first. You know, I'm just drawing in my tulips. I had these like kind of like poppy kind of flowers. You can put in daisies. You can get really detailed if you want. Move them in a little bit. I just kind of, you can just kind of make these wiggles for flowers, but you can get really detailed if you want to get these detailed tulips in here and kind of like these poppy flowers, little flowers. and had little sprays. Just simple stuff like this. You know, put the leaves in. You kind of want to do the flower part first in case you want like this one if you want some kind of overhanging from the wheelbarrow and then you can draw the wheelbarrow second you're just going to kind of go in here and just make a bunch of little i want to call them doodads but doodles you know this is the part that's fun like you're just kind of drawing in some doodle flowers and leaves and like I said if you want to put them leaves hanging across 
the, the wheelbarrow you should draw that in first but there's nothing you don't have to draw it real serious I'm just making these pretty flowers Ooh, the birds are really chirping today they're so happy it's spring I don't know about you but I am and the weather's been really nice here so so again going to draw our wheelbarrow just like I showed you I love how this paper is so rough so you get this really imperfection of drawing and just has like a nice sketchy look to it and just drawing the whole thing I just showed you how to draw with the wheel this little covering on the wheel and then a little wheel like that and then there's a little one back here and then the ground I didn't really draw that but we're going to just wash in color. You could put a couple of little sprays of grass if you want. But that's how you do that. Like just really simple, cute. And same thing with the flower pot. Um, you know, you're making a rectangle. La -da -la -da -da. <laughs> and you're kind of going down and curving the bottom. I like the sketchy look. So if you're messing up, don't worry about it. There's a little trowel. The whole point is just to have fun, right? If it looks a little kind of messed up, like I said, don't worry about it because that's the whole point is that you have this sketchy kind of look like a study vignette. I'm just going to throw in some. And then for the lavender, he's just doing this really quick lines we're going to be painting in the lavender I'm just doing these little wiggles dots kind of like that you don't want to get too technical with it put a little grass again here you could put little detail lines if you want here little sketchy lines I didn't have them in my sketch but it's kind of nice to just to add them in just little sketch lines you want it to have that real free-flowing look like you've just sketched it like sitting out in the deck or out in the patio looking at your plants I gotta start planting soon we got seeds to start planting getting ready to do some seedlings for our vegetable garden as you know I've posted many times I show in the videos on YouTube and uh, Instagram that we have a organic vegetable garden so so there's my little sketch right aren't they cute so once you get that in you know you can erase the um, underlying pencil marks I use a um, kneaded eraser love it I mean so what do you call them sorry gum eraser oh, Mondays <laughs> Mini Monday. This will go pretty fast. Now, you don't have to do this technique. You could have done just where you sketched it in and then you're painting it. You know, same kind of premise. This just goes a little faster and it has a different kind of look. But you just, it's kind of like a paint by number kind of situation. So the, the wheelbarrow can be a color. It could be anything you want. I think I might make it a color. I might make it, I have this Verdier blue color here. It's a little muddled, but it's bright. And it's kind of glad that it's a little muddled here. I'm using my Princeton 8 long round. I'm going to do wet on dry here. Getting it loose. So there's some of the colors that were next to it. So it's not as bright. It's kind of what I wanted. I'm just going to fill in that little wheelbarrow. The same premise that you do with watercolors. You can put in your color first. And then you can go back in and add some deeper color. Just because you did pen and ink doesn't mean you can't get in those little details of value and tone you, you can't skip that one come on <laughs> so you go in there you just put that solid color in if you want to at this point I think I'm going to do a technique where it's not wet on wet so much wet on wet if you wanted to go in you would add like another dark, darker color value to that so I might take that Brodier blue I might add a little peacock to it oh, that's a little too bright add that Prussian to it then or even just a little magenta and you get a little darker color and you can kind of just put that over in here 
under where you know the flower is going to be kind of hanging over it. I'm going to hang here, just down here, and then the edges. And it just gives it that life to it. You know, and then for the the handles, they could be another color too. They could be a bright green, whatever you want. I have a cabin yellow deep hair. Gonna mix it with some peacock blue. It's like 50 50. If that's a little too bright, I get more like a Kelly green. So I might mix the yellow. It could be yellow peacock, it could be yellow ultramarine. Here's the ultramarine I have up here. That's gonna make it like a darker green, like a duller green. See that? Or if I wanted to do Prussian blue and yellow, get that darker deep green. There we go. I like a bunch of different blues. See? Get that bright. If you add more yellow, obviously you get it brighter. Just play around with mixing. Like I said, it doesn't have to be green. You could have made it um, gray, blue, whatever you want. I'm just going to try and just one of these really bright green little arms. I might add a little burnt umber to that, which I have here. Put some down under here on the bottom part of that kind of like the legs, a little darker. So you're just playing around. I take that burnt umber and I'll go over here by the wheel. Put that little, that was that little weird kind of connection piece that goes around the wheel and then to the wheelbarrow. Could make that brown. Obviously I'm gonna make the wheel blackish gray color. So I have paints gray over here. You can just mix that up going to put that in the wheel. It's probably going to dry lighter, so I might keep going and adding in um, another layer of it. So when you draw in this, when you draw it all in, it's basically like a paint by numbers, You're just kind of painting in all the colors. Can you see the same green here? I can go in and add some of this green right in here. See? All the flowers. You just kind of like tapping it in with my brush, the tip of my brush. You don't have to get technical. If you want to go and make it even brighter, add some more yellow, get a really bright green. See, I'm just kind of going like this. Doo -doo. Now some leaves you can really just go in and paint them in as realistic. But these, most of them just kind of tapping in a color. And then I'll make a darker color. I'll help take the brush and blue, mix with that green, and get in there and put some darker ones in there too. See? I'm not really painting anything specific. I'm just kind of tapping in some green color. Just like that. I would wait till this dries before you start playing around with the flowers because it will get a little muddy. And make it a little darker here and here. The handle, you can make any color you wanted. I mean, it could be that gray color, paint's gray. It could be a brighter color. I think I'll make it gray. Just a little more. And see how I didn't fill in the whole space? It has that sketch look to it. You want to have like a little sketch. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. We're going to switch into the other one. So a terracotta pot. pot. I can make some Kevin Yellow Deep here. I'll grab some Quinacridone Magenta. A little orangey bright yellow. I'll grab some of the Burnt Umber too. I'm trying to get that nice terracotta look. A little red. All right. You play around with the color. So you feel like you've got that terracotta look that you're looking for. It's always good to practice on a little scrap. I was practicing some lines that I want to do. So you get that. It's a little brownish. And I'm going to water it down just a little bit. 
And I'm going to fill that pot in. Got a little more water in here. I want to dry a little bit lighter so I can go back in and add some deeper tones. And both pots don't have to be terracotta pots. But if you wanted to make them that, it's fine. So I might, hmm, do I want to keep them both terracotta pots? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll make the second one gray. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep them both terracotta pots. Play around with it. Like I said, don't have to follow the same rules as me. I like to see what you come up with. At least I'm gonna wait till that dries. And then for the trowel, whatever you wanna call that thing. I'm just not in the mood with my brain today. It's Monday. Just fill that in with gray. The handle, I would make a color. Maybe kind of coordinate with this one by using the Verde Blue that we did in the beginning. Wouldn't that be pretty? So a nice blue. You could have made the pots blue. So if you wanted to have like a coordination, you wanted to have like these two designs and frames because they kind of go together with colors. That's what coordinating means. Colors and whatnot. So I'll take this same green and we can start painting in our leaves for the tulips. Maybe a little darker here. You don't want it too dark because then you can't see those pretty little details that you drew. Let's play around with it. For the lavender, I'll get a little bit brighter in the green. Again, we're just making these look simple. See? Just going down, up and down like this. Nothing really hard here. This is how you play with watercolor and different mediums. See, just do that. The tulips can be any color you want. It could be yellow, it could be pink. Um, this is dry a little bit. Well, we want to go back and make another shade for the terracotta pots. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So the tulips could be pink. I'm going to take my magenta. Might add a little yellow to that. You can make whatever color you want. So I don't want this intense magenta. I want more of a pink pink. Like I said, play around with the colors. Could be purple, could be pink. I'm making mine pink. Because I'm going to have purple with the lavender. Just simple pink tulips. I'm testing to see if it's still wet. So with the terracotta, we're going to make another darker value. Basically, you could have watered down, you could have made a nice dark, deep terracotta color like this, and then you water it down for the pots, but then you keep this dark color because you're going to come back and then you can put in the shadow. See, that one's next to that one, the shadow of that. Water it down a little bit more with this side. Just kind of like washing and see how I'm just kind of wiggling and washing in color here and here. Just like that. You can get even darker if you want. Play around with even darker color. See that? It comes to life, right? The ground, you can start playing around with the ground already because it's kind of dry. I'm just going to get some green that we had here up here. Just kind of wash it in. I'm making like these little spring vignettes. So you're not filling in the whole entire paper. Vignette's kind of like a sketch. I'm going to add a little more yellow to that. It looks a little muddy. Brighten it up a little bit. Just kind of filling in this part. And I'll just go like this with the grass. See? Just take the tip of your brush. Do, do, do. Make the grasses. Even though you've drawn some out. And then, of course, the greens here will be a little bit darker. I'll add some Prussian blue. 
get that darker. We do a little of that burnt ember. And just kind of tap in a darker green right in here. Just like that. It's making a little shadow with that trowel. And again, put the grasses. You can always just go around and play around with that. Don't worry about it too much. All right now, we're going to make the pretty um, lavender. So, I'm going to clean up my mess that I have down here. I'm going to take my magenta and my peacock blue. And you get the pretty purple. Just like that. The Verdier makes a really nice pretty purple too. There we go. And you're just going to take this color and water it down. And you just take the tip of your brush and kind of like tap, 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 tap. If that's a little too dark, you can water it down a little more. And just kind of tap, tap, tap. Might water it down a little bit more. Mine seems really dark. Trying to take off all the excess color. There we go. Purple. It helps to take off all that color and make it lighter so you can see the pretty purple. I'm just going like this. Tap, tap, tap. See? Tap, tap. Really quickly. And you're getting that lavender pretty color. I actually bought some lavender seeds. I'm hoping to plant some lavender on my side of my deck. I want that smell. See, nothing special. Just doing these little taps. Put some sporadic ones up here. Woohoo! Like they're having a party. <laughs> See that? And then you go back with your pink and you can add a little darker color here on the side and the bottom. Play around with that. So pretty much that was pretty quick, right? You can go back to your little trowel. I always like to add that's the thing, you draw in the the design and you can go in and you can add some I'm taking some paints gray here. You can't really see it's hard to see everything. Adding a little shadow here. See? Those little details. Just a little shadow. Same thing with that handle. You get that Verdier blue. Might mix it up with some brown. Get a little bit darker. And adding in just a little bit of sh detail. And the same thing again <laughs> with some of the greens here. You get a little darker. Not too much. You don't want it super dark. Just kind of where it goes next, hits the pot. Those little details make a difference. Same thing with the grass here. See? You can put that darker green back in here. This kind of got ugly here, so I'm going to take just my yellow and the peacock blue. Just brighten that green up. Get a nice bright green. Put that in. Nice pretty green. That's my clanking, sorry. I'm just going to play around with the colors. You can go right back over these colors too and brighten these up. So that's that. Zoom back out. And same premise for this little guy, you know, went to the grass. Just going to wash this down a little bit. Put some bright green. And we'll add in some shadows. It's just a little vignette sketch. I'm going to wait till this dries. I don't want to bleed in the darker colors just yet. You can do that if you want. If you want to go in and grab dark colors and start just playing around with wet on wet. You know, here. Obviously, it's making a shadow. And then for that, uh, for up in here, you have some, you can make the tulips yellow and pink and purple, whatever. I'm going to do some pink and purple, I mean, pink and yellow ones, pink and yellow flowers. So I'm making or reddish pink. See, you have a like reddish pink color here. I mix with the yellow and the magenta. 
I'm gonna water it down a little bit. I always tap it in my paper towel too. And this brush is hard for you to work with. Take the number four, right? I have both modes just in case. So I have the four, a little more control. I can go in here and just fill in all the pretty little flowers. I keep these like pink ones here. If you want to stay kind of in the lines, you would probably use the four just to get right in there, leaving that circle in the middle. Um, I'm going to make some, get rid of all this mess here. <laughs> some bright yellow ones. I add a little brown to that so it's not so bright. But yellow tulips. We didn't have any yellow on the other one. I'm adding yellow tulips in this one. And then the pink dries, I'll add a little yellow center. I can have a, put a little bit of yellow in that green. Just kind of, see, I'm just kind of tapping. If you want also to have some purple in there too. So I might grab some this purple lavender that I had and just add some purple to try and get my purple bright just add a little color can add some red so I can add this really deep kind of red tone in here. But I'm just kind of tapping in color. There's nothing specific. I can add a little, even like some of that bright orange that I have. I have brilliant orange. Kind of with that yellow. To brighten up that yellow. If you wanted to do daffodils instead of tulips. See, I'm kind of just going in here. I'm just putting in some yellows. Did, did, did. Having fun. <laughs> And then leaves. This is a green leaf in here. Hanging over the side. And out here. I could have put more sprays. These are green sprays, little teeny green sprays. I didn't finish that rim of the wheelbarrow, so I go back in and take that pretty blue, but more dark. I'll add a little bit of brown to that. Just darken it up. We can even add a little bit of peacock too, just to brighten it too. This is the rim. See how easy that was to fill in? And again, if you want to get some darker greens in there, not too many, just put a few. Just brighten everything up. I'll go back in and add a little more bright pink. You want to play around with it. And for the Verdier Blue um, Wheelbarrow, I might go back in again and add another darker shadow. Just like that in here. For the Wheelbarrow, I might just grab whatever color I think might work in the middle. Maybe just like this darker blue in here. And again, I'm going to go back and grab some of my Payne's Gray and get a little darker here. Just in the wheel. Keep it. I'll keep it light up front, but I'll go in and add some darker colors in the back here. Same thing with the green wheelbarrow. Now this one's kind of looking like it's floating, right? So we're gonna have to put some color grass down there. So we'll take this green that we have, water it down, and put some under here. We don't want it floating. We could take our brush, it's so tiny, and make little sprays of grass. Right, get some dark green colors, do the same thing here. Not everything has to be drawn in, just colored in like paint by number. I'm making a little darker shadow here, wheelbarrow. And pretty much that's it. You can go back in and play around with, like I have this great little, uh, the fountain pen ink, this little old nib. Once it's dry, you don't want to do it when it's wet. If you do it when it's wet, it's going to bleed. So you can go back into like, this one's not dry, so, but this one is. If you want to make a little thicker 
ink lines. Just get a little variety going with your with your design. It just adds another little thing. I kind of like it keeping that sketch look. But I love the thickness it can create. Now they have fountain pens like this, but you, know, you just have to turn it on its side to get it thicker. I think I have one in description box. But this is something else you want to try. But I would wait because this is ink. Wait till it dries. Otherwise, you can use like a pen like this. You know, it's different because it doesn't have that pointy nib, but you can still kind of like turn on its side and get that thick and thin kind of look. Again, just playing around with the wheel. Get that little thicker. It just adds a little something, something. Play around with the flowers. But be careful because you can splatter it. I have a tutorial where I showed that happened to me. So, but guys, it's just, you want to just have fun. Spring is about renewal. And I think we're hitting that stride. I know some people want to just put everyone into fear, but I'm thinking, think of the good news. There's good news coming. And there you go. So there's our little our little uh, mini Monday Madness vignette slash ink and wash um, spring watercolors. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments section. Um, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. And don't forget to check out Patreon so you can download the traceable. But, you know, I showed you guys how to draw this too. So you can do it and just play around with painting it and washing in color and using the ink pens. So take care, guys. Have a fantastic day and happy painting.